The city of New Orleans. As Louisiana's largest metropolitan area, it is primarily known for its distinct French and Spanish architecture, Creole cuisine, and being the birthplace of jazz. The city is located on the banks of the Mississippi River and rests just south of Lake Pontchartrain. 49% of the historic township is below sea level, making drainage a major concern for the city's population. Because New Orleans is almost completely surrounded by water, in 1965, the Army Corps of Engineers built man-made levees to secure the city in case of a major storm or hurricane. The force of Mother Nature had tested the city over the years, but in 2005, the Big Easy caved under the storm surge of Hurricane Katrina. The Category 3 hurricane flooded 80% of the city and did more damage than any other natural disaster in U.S. history. Roughly $80 billion worth. In Louisiana, an estimated 204,000 homes were destroyed and 800,000 residents displaced. The storm left more than 100 million cubic yards of utter debris and devastation behind. That's enough debris to fill the Superdome in New Orleans 21 times. 10 years later, the city is still recovering. Efforts continue to rebuild communities like the Lower Ninth Ward, once thought lost to the storm. Organizations like the Make It Right Foundation, founded by actor Brad Pitt in 2007, helped to build environmentally friendly homes for families in need. In today's Math at Work webisode, we'll be delving into the mathematics of building a home, one that needs to be sustainable in a tricky landscape like New Orleans. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ty Pennington, and today we'll be looking at math and how it's used in building a home. Some of you are familiar with the work I've done on ABC's Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Now on that show, we provided home improvements for less fortunate families and community schools. Today, we're gonna do something very similar, but we'll also focus on how mathematics plays an intricate role for every team member involved in building a home. That includes architects, carpenters, engineers, electricians, and project management. I'm here in the Lower Ninth Ward, New Orleans, and I want to introduce you to two local students who are very passionate about math and their community. Come on out here, guys. This is Sarah and Rico. So, Sarah, what grade are you in? I'm in seventh grade, and I go to Stella Worley Middle School. Now, Rico, what about you? I'm in 10th grade, and I go to De La Salle High School. So, why are you guys so passionate about math? Because I like numbers, and I like to solve problems. Well, you know what? Solving problems, that never quits. You'll be doing that your entire life. So, today, I'm going to introduce you to two friends of mine who are also very passionate about the work they do. Mm -hmm. And working in two teams, you guys are going to solve some real life problems involved in building a sustainable home. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, let's take a look at how important math is when it comes to architecture and building. The first step is the design. Architects draft detailed plans indicating the structure's location, making sure the house's perimeter is set back from other surrounding homes. This house has three bedrooms, a kitchen, a living room, and two bathrooms. The size of each room is important. For instance, bedrooms must be at least 80 square feet. Next comes the foundation. This house is built on wooden pilings that support and protect the house in case of a major flood. The framing or bones of the building sits on top of the pilings. The size of the windows must be at least 1 12th the size of the room. Now builders install the floors and walls. Cabinets, doors, fixtures, and furniture complete the final touches turning this house design into a home. Hey, Catherine. It's good to see you found a little dry spot to work in. That's awesome. Here in New Orleans, we're not afraid of a little rain. I can see that. <laughs> so I'd like to meet a friend of mine. This is Sarah, who's a, a local student here from New Orleans, here to help you with some of your math problems. And the great news is she really is interested in studying architecture. Well, that's wonderful. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Catherine. So do me a favor. Why don't you explain to Sarah what you guys do here at the Make It Right Foundation and also what you're working on right now? Sure, so I'm the project coordinator down here in the construction office, and I work with the architects, engineers, and contractors to make sure that the house is being built the way it's been designed. So why don't you show her? Sure. So take a look down here. To make a home more energy efficient, Make It Right install solar panels on the roof of each home they built. However, figuring out what solar panels to use depends on both the panels and the roof. Builders need to assess the size of the roof, what direction it faces, and how much shade it gets and how much energy the home needs. 
The blueprints show the designated area for the solar panels. So Catherine, can you explain the problem today? Sure. The home solar panel system will ideally produce 467 kilowatt hours of energy each month. The projected amount of energy that each solar panel can produce is 156 kilowatts per year. Knowing this information, we need to figure out how many panels this house will need. Okay, I gotta say, this seems like one of those problems that we may need our math expert. Kim, can you help us structure this problem? I'll find a solution that measures up. We know that each solar panel produces 156 kilowatt hours per year, and the home is projected to use 467 kilowatt hours per month. That's enough information to figure out how many panels we need. The tricky part is the panels are measured in kilowatt hours per year, but the amount the house needs is measured in kilowatt hours per month. So we need to convert the rates into the same unit. Let's convert the months to a year to make the units match. That's 5,604 kilowatt hours per year. To find the number of panels, we divide the total energy by the amount of energy each panel produces. That gives us about 35.9 panels. However, you can't buy 9 tenths of a panel, so you would need to order 36 solar panels to meet the projected energy needs of the home. Thanks, Kim. Catherine, does that help solve our problem? It solves part of it, but Sarah brought up an interesting point. Well, please, share. We know how many panels we need, but how do we know if they all fit? Kim? Sarah's just brought up a really good point. Do you have time to fit in another problem for us? Of course I do, Ty. According to the blueprint, an area of 10 feet by 49 feet has been set aside for solar panels because that portion of the roof receives the most sunlight. Each panel is five feet long and two and a half feet wide. We need to see if the entire 36 panel system will fit in the designated roof area. If we only had to worry about the area, we could fit over 36 panels. But the shape also matters. For example, a 12 and a half by one foot rectangle has the same area as the solar panel, but you couldn't fit the panel inside without cutting it. Let's draw a grid of 10 squares by 49 squares to represent the area for solar panels. Here we can fit exactly two panels vertically. Since there will be two rows, we need 18 panels in each row. And two and a half times 18 gives us a total length of 45 feet. Since 45 is less than 49, we can fit all of the solar panels we need with some room to spare. Excellent. Well guys, get busy. I'm gonna go check on the other team. Hey Caesar. Hey Ty. Remember when I told you I was gonna bring you some help today? Yeah, is this him? Well this is Rico and he literally told me that he wants to be a math teacher one day, so I think you're in good hands. Awesome, man, that sounds great. You know Rico, nice to meet you. Nice to meet so, Caesar, you. do me a favor. Why don't you explain to, to Rico what you guys do here at Make It Right and also what you're working on today? So, what I do for Make It Right is I am in charge of researching and purchasing all of the building materials that go into our homes, right. from the light switches to the pervious concrete we're about to pour. Now, in New Orleans, flooding is a serious problem. Installing pervious concrete is one way to help. When it rains, pervious concrete absorbs some of the water, so less of it runs into the city's drainage system. There is more than one type of pervious concrete, however, and knowing which type to use isn't easy. For instance, home builders should consider the amount of rainfall expected, how much rain the concrete needs to absorb, and the underlying soil properties. So, Caesar, what is the challenge you face today with the concrete? The basic pervious concrete mix is four parts aggregate to four and a half parts loose cement, right, with some water in there to complete the mixture. So today we have a walkway that is seven feet wide by 11 feet long and six inches deep. So how much aggregate and cement are we gonna need for this specific project? Okay, I think we should call upon our expert. Kim, I hope you've got a solid answer for us. I'll make sure there are no cracks between Caesar's solution and mine. Make It Right uses a ratio of four parts aggregate to four and a half parts cement and the dimensions of the walkway are about seven feet wide, 11 feet long, and half a foot deep. 
the volume of the walkway and the ratio of aggregate to cement is everything we need to solve the problem. Multiplying the dimensions gives us a volume of 38 and a half cubic feet. We can create a ratio table to find the proper amounts of aggregate and cement. In a ratio table, each row has an equivalent ratio. The first row has four parts aggregate and four and a half parts cement. The second row has the total volume of 38 and a half cubic feet. Add the aggregate and cement to get a total concrete mixture of 8.5 parts. We can divide to find the relationship between these ratios. Let's apply this strategy to the aggregate and cement. So Caesar used 18.1 cubic feet of aggregate mixed with 20.4 cubic feet of cement to make all the pervious concrete for the walkway. Well, that's a pretty concrete answer. Rico, what do you think? Where did he get my hands dirty? Well, you guys, get busy. I'll be back in a bit. Thanks, Ty. Our students don't know it yet, but I've planned a very special surprise for them both. And while I put the final touches on the surprise, check out the progress both our teams made today with their problem-solving skills. So you guys ready? All right, let's do this. Hey, Rico, Sarah, come on out here. Hey, guys, we got a surprise! Hey! This is Taylor. Hey, guys, well, on behalf of Make It Right, I want to thank you for all your work today. You did a great job. And I also wanted to tell you that in recognition for your great work helping to rebuild your community and also for all your great achievements in math, the mayor of New Orleans has issued an official proclamation in honor of both of you. So here is one for Sarah, and here is one for Rico. Whoop, whoop. Congratulations. <laughs> How does that feel? Pretty good? Yeah. Any shout outs to your, uh, your teachers or anybody? Shout out to Ms. Woods from Stella Worley. Shout out to Cusco from Ulyssa High School. Well, I have to say, what an amazing day this has been. Hard work does pay off. Sarah and Rico proved that today. Both of our student builders were able to work through some challenging problems and along the way improve their skills as mathematicians while adding value to the community as well, which I call that a win-win. I want to thank Caesar, Catherine, and Taylor from the Make It Right Foundation for working with us today and for showing all of us the important role math plays in building a home. Ten years after Katrina, New Orleans is still rebuilding, but with the help of organizations like Make It Right and community members like Sarah and Rico, it will be back and better than ever. I hope we've all learned that math makes the impossible possible. Without it, we would not have been able to complete this house. This shows you that no matter what interesting career you choose, math will be a part of it in ways that you might not even know yet. The learning doesn't stop. Keep building your skills in math by checking out other episodes of Math at Work. Have a great day, and thanks for watching. Again, nice job. Well done, well done. Action. Stand by. I'm Ty Pennant, and today we'll be looking at how math. Look at that, one more time. Make it right, install solar panels on the roof of each home they build. They also make sure a train runs right through that home. <laughs> <laughs> right today we're going to be, be going to do some uh, something very similar. But I know I got schooled. Speaking of school, Pan, move that bus. Guys, here we go. I've been waiting to say it all day. Move that bus. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Yeah. It's a wrap.